I didn't know who Marius Constant was, or at least I didn't think I knew who he was uh, until the late 90s. He's the most famous obscure composer who ever lived. The ideas, the expression, the aesthetic, the imagination. It demands your, your full attention and it rewards your full attention. Riverside Symphony always had a strong interest in contemporary music and it's more than promoting, it's embracing and championing the best music of our time. We had gone to European capitals to hear music. We went to Norway, we went to Switzerland, and then eventually we went to Paris. We wanted to find out for ourselves what was being composed. Who were the great composers that we may not have heard about? The effort that we put into it is born of our belief that there actually must be higher quality music than we were aware of, and we found out that we were right. It was a very dark week in Paris. They brought out uh, stacks of scores and, and recordings. And after pouring over hundreds and hundreds of, of, of scores, Anthony raised his hand. I waved to him and I said, you know, we had the earphones, and I said, I think I've got something. And then we heard this recording of Turner looked at the score and it was just, it like screamed out. It was so visual, it was so powerful in its emotion, it was so expressive in its language that I said, oh my God, why doesn't everybody know about this music? Then we, we read the bio. For an obscure composer, Mars Constant wrote some of the most famous music that was ever written. You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. But only a handful of people know he composed it. That's the signpost up ahead. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Not long after we went to Paris, I was uh, at home late one night and the TV was on and there was a ballet. And the, the music, it just uh, was devastating. And there was a sweep and a depth of emotion to the music. At the very end it said, Cyrano de Bergerac, Marius Constant. En revanche, avec, euh, avec Roland Petit, euh, vous êtes resté euh, 10 ans avec lui. Ah oui. C'est quand même une fidélité assez remarquable pour un musicien. Ben oui, parce que je voulais apprendre le théâtre. Et avec Roland Petit, on apprend très bien le théâtre. Quel est le rapport entre la danse et le théâtre Il y a un rapport très intime. C'est-à-dire qu'il y a, pour apprendre le théâtre, il faut savoir ménager les périodes de, de tension et les périodes de détente. Donc là aussi, c'est une musique qui raconte une histoire. Toujours. Je ne sais pas écrire une musique... Euh, Pure. Abstraite. Donc pour vous, même quand c'est une œuvre de musique de chambre qui n'a pas de nom, euh, euh, je lui il y a donne, toujours une histoire il y a, derrière. Il y a toujours une histoire derrière. Turner est un, est un homme de, de, de substance substance aérienne ou liquide. Pluie, vapeur et vitesse. Ça me donnait déjà des idées musicales. It's not just a, a depiction of a train and a painting. He's made a piece out of it. And all of a sudden you find yourself in this world and it's so like evocative and erotic and strong. And he does it like within a split second. Why was Turner so appealing to Constant? He sp speaks of the torment in the paintings. Self-portrait is, it's not flattery, you know. 
every moment in Costa's music is gripping. It just holds your attention in such a way that you just follow every moment. That very lonely, dusky image of the castle, um, you really feel it and hear it at the end when the piece quiets down and there's something very, very haunting and mysterious about it. And then you hear the, what seems to be like a church bell ringing. There's an eloquence to it. It can't be described, and it's the only way the piece can be. Pourquoi ce souci de la forme? Ça vient, ça vient de, 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 de l'enseignement que j'ai eu à Bucarest, où c'était l'école allemande, comme vous, euh, on l'a dit tout à l'heure, où la forme est très importante. Mais la forme sonate, vous utilisez toujours ces vieilles formes Vous restez fidèle ah, Non, 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 j'invente. J'invente des formes nouvelles. Le handling of time and development in the Bravissima is, 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 is a work unlike any I've ever heard. The shortest symphonies um, you know, of the earliest classical period are maybe 15 or 16 minutes. And what you have in Bravissima, a symphony in, uh, what is it, eight, nine, 10 minutes to accomplish a, an integrated piece is, uh, there's hardly any repetition at all. He begins the music and the, and then he starts to develop the work immediately. Every detail is so arresting and you get deeper and deeper. It's like you almost go into a dream. You know, you wake up in the morning and you look at the clock and it's five to seven and then you fall back asleep and then your alarm rings five minutes later and you have a dream that you think it's been going on for hours. And I think that's what he, he captured in this. Je ne suis pas un intellectuel, tout de suite, je vous le dis tout de suite. Je ne suis pas un intellectuel, je suis un instinctif. Comme les 103 regards dans l'eau que j'ai fait pour violon et orchestre. Les 103 mouvements de ce, ce mouvement, de, de cette œuvre, sont donnés aux solistes et aux chefs d'orchestre, pas, pas le public. Le public écoute ça comme un concerto pour violon. I remember speaking with uh, Marius about the piece and you know he was so proud of the fact that he crafted a piece based on 103 um, I wouldn't say variations but sort of reflections of, of how water can be viewed with the colors and the, and the palettes and, and the emotion that's in this piece it works so well for the orchestra and Olivier Charlier, the violinist, open up another dimension to this piece. No one has written a symphony that's nine or 10 minutes and no one has written a violin concerto or a piece with 103 movements in it. <laughs> one of the most important things um, a, a young conductor and a young musician will, will, will think about in their career is, you know, when am I gonna do my next Brahms cycle or my Mahler this or that? But along the way, if you leave yourself open to the experience of, of discovering something new, you'll discover something about yourself, and you'll discover something about the music, and you'll discover a whole genre that can enrich your life in a way that you never thought was even possible. There's nothing more satisfying than that experience. I think every musician can count uh, that one moment in their life where they say, Wow, this is a monumental discovery. For Marius Constant and Riverside Symphony, this was our wow moment. Our greatest hope in, in this recording is that um, with this one, these wonderful performances and this incredible music is that it's a document. It's a document for Marius Constant. This recording is, is one of Riverside Symphony's proudest moments. Anybody who listens to this will, will get so much out of this music, and we hope that this CD has a long life ahead of it.